to November, and it's as bleak as midwinter. You keep thinking what it's like for Ma. And Joe with the baby. It's colder for her. Remember what she used to say? The heart warms to home. <sighs> Look, we've each got our thoughts of Ma and all our memories. But talking about it isn't going to make three years go any quicker. Now, come on, we'll, we'll stir up the fire, lady. Tom, what's... I wanted to make sure there was no one else here. I'd better go out and keep watch. No, Tom. You must go. You can't be seen with us. What is it? The police come after us. There was a fight. Three of them were killed. What's to be done? Donnie's hurt. Bullet cut across his shoulder. Let's get those things off and have a look at it. Kitty, you tear up some bandages. Go on, quick. And Gracie, you peel some potatoes. Margaret, there's no time. All right, just cut up some cold meat and all. You have to eat. When you've seen Daddy right, then we must go away. Where? North, out of the colony. We've got to get away. <laughs> You'd better go, Tom. Come on, I'll keep watch. I should be with you, Ned. In anything but this, you would be, Cousin Thomas. God keep you. May the wind be at your back. I fear there'll be more than wind at our backs before too long. Goodbye, Tom. How's Danny? Shoulder's not too bad. Can't seem to stop shivering, even close to by the fire. Oh, Ned, how did it happen? They were armed to the teeth, Maggie. If they'd killed us, they'd be heroes now, collecting their rewards. But today they're dead. And that isn't what anyone wanted. Another and exciting of the Kerry brothers and two men. That's exactly the same as Juan Garata, sir. Complete hysteria. An ugly business, Sadler. It is indeed, sir. No trace yet of Sergeant Kennedy. None. What chance would he have at the hands of those butchers? True, Sergeant Steele. Whatever we may hope, we cannot expect that he'll be found alive. This is an atrocious crime. And as Assistant Chief Commissioner, I'm taking personal charge of the pursuit of these murderers. Is there any pattern emerging? Only total confusion, sir. Uh, they seem to have fled in all directions at once. Clearly, then, not all the reports are accurate. I shall try to establish those that are. Sir. Hmm? Sergeant Kennedy was my friend, and I have sworn to be there at Ned Kelly's death or capture. I shall be privileged to help in any way that I can. I respect your enthusiasm, Sergeant. However, at the moment, let us all appreciate that time is the essence of the contract. It's all 
I die, stillborn. Ah, it's good to see you, you damn grasshopper. <laughs> Wind's blowing this way again, is it? Joe? You've not heard? What? There's been some bad trouble. Three traps are killed. Killed? They come after Ned and Dan. Well, then, let's get the hell out of here. We can go up the high country. I got the others with me, Ned and Dan and Steve Hart. They're spelling our horses in the top paddock. All right. But you let them go their own way. This is their trouble. Aaron, I killed one of the police. So it's my trouble as well. Oh, my God. What a mess. Then what are you doing? I'm going to go up over the Murray into New South Wales. We want you to scout for us. The traps are everywhere. We've had the devil's own time come this 30 miles from Ned's place. But the rain. The creeks around here are all running bankers. You'll never cross the Murray. We've got to. So will you help us? I'm with you. This is a damnable business, and I have no need to impress on you the urgency of our pursuit. Suffice it to say that a reward of 800 pounds has been gazetted for the capture of the Kelly brothers and their two accomplices. We are now confident they're heading for the Murray River, which is rising to full flood. They will be trapped. So let's be about it. Sergeant, prepare to mount. Mount. Half section right march. Forward. here. I'll scout further along. No, I'll come with you. Stick in among the trees till we get back.
got the others. Get the hell out of here. Try to get back home. They're nothing, boss. They get across or they drown. Or we miss them. the body. Cut off one of the poor fellow's ears. They never did. He's been lying in the bush for five days now. It was wild animals. Animals indeed. And they'll be made to pay for it. along with you. I mean, I could just drop down, see me dar, and tell him I got a job droving for a few weeks. I could bring back some tucker for us. Good night, Joe. We'll never forget the help you've given us, Aaron. But you can't ride with us. Mate, you and Joe, you're gonna need a good man with you. I could lick these two kids into fits. It's the four of us that traps are hunting, not you. You don't have to run, and better it stays that way. Look, you're free to go where you like and be a tower of strength to us. God knows we need friends in what lies ahead. Will you look in on Ma now and then? Think about what I said. You'll see it's right. Take care, Boyle. See you, mate. Thanks. back soon. You see. Sadler, all is in readiness. It is, sir. The gentlemen of the press are with us. Let us try to put on a good show for them. I trust you have a respectable horse for me, Sadler. I must consider my position as chairman of the Victoria Racing Club. I have considered your position as chief commissioner of police, sir. Of course. Sadler, who is the uh, spurious aboriginal? This is our witness, sir. The man who cited the Kerry brothers and their accomplices. I deemed it advisable we conceal his identity. You have an infallible flair for melodrama, Nicholson. Now, where's this horse? And you, sir, have an infallible flair for pomposity. Easy, old man. Come on.
It would appear, gentlemen, that this is the house of an associate of the Kellys, called Sheriff. It would appear that we are a day or two after the fair. In the name of the Queen, I call on you to surrender. Hear that this is the home of an associate of the Kellys, called Byrne. Madam, we have reason to believe that your son is one of the men responsible for the police murders. There is a noose around his neck. However, with your assistance, we may yet be able to spare his life. Help us to find him. He's made his own bed. Let him lie on it. That should do you for a while, Mrs. Bourne. I thank you, Erin. Erin Sherrod? Yes. We know you to be a friend of the Kellys. If you mind what's good for you, you'll help us find them. Joe Bourne is like a brother to me. Now, would a man give his own brother to the hangman? No, lady, but you might be able to save him. If you help us get the others, I guarantee his life will be spared. You're in charge here, are you? I am the Assistant Chief Commissioner. I can give you such an undertaking. Is the Chief Commissioner here? Captain Standish. We could not possibly allow Joseph Byrne to get away scot-free. But can you spare his life? I have no doubt the government would accept my recommendation in the matter. Well. I'll think about it. There's no one around, and I've turned the dogs loose. In any case, I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on the road. When we got to the last fence tonight, I thought, eight days on the run, and we're back where we started. Like it was some bad thing, and that flood was some sort of curse on us. But ten minutes back here at the hearth, and I could see. We were running away from three dead men. This is where we should be, in a country we know best, with our friends. If we stop running, they can't chase us. We can move through these hills without a trace, and no one to point the way for them. Ned, they put 500 pounds on the head of every one of you. 2,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. People are saying some fearful things, Ned. It was a fair fight, nothing I look for. That's not what the police and the papers are telling to the world. Well, somehow we've got to find a way to let people know the truth. Oh, for God's sake, Ned, what we have to do is stay alive. <laughs> Getting a bit of starch in your drawers, eh, Nipper? <laughs> I reckon he'll survive for another day or two. Well, we'll do a damn sight better than that. We'll show him what it is to take on the Kellys. There's two more in the clan now, eh? I'll drink to that, Ned. <laughs> Ricky, I will too. Confusion to the Saxon. You can bring Superintendent Hare a Madeira. And I'll have some of that port you gave me last night, uh, the one tending to purple. And in short, my dear Hare, the whole thing was a most frightful bore. A bootless errand. Nicholson treated the entire affair like some Scottish opera, complete with nigger minstrels. <laughs> 
It was like riding to hounds without a scent of the fox, and nothing decent to drink at the end of it. <laughs> Sir, I'm sure you'll be the first to admit that bushwork is not really your metier. Alas, it's true. But you're so awfully good at it. Capturing Harry Power. Coping with the rigors. Really, you should go up there and take charge of the Kelly business. Thank you, Baxter. What do you say, my dear fellow? Well, sir, while I'm conscious that Mr. Nicholson is senior to me in rank, as the chairman of the Victorian Racing Club will appreciate, uh, perhaps it's a case of the right horse for the right course. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody coming. It looks like Tom Lloyd. There's a girl with him. I can't make out who it is. It's not your sister. Ah, oh, it's my cousin Kath Lloyd. It's a little tackle like that doing up here. She looks all right. You've been up in the hills too long. Ned! Ned! Tom and Kath Lloyd are coming. Hope you got the billy on. I'm as dry as a wooden god. Well, unless you bought some tea, you'll be drinking hot water. I brought some tea and a lot else. Should keep you going for a while. Well, how'd you be, Catherine? Quite a ride up here for a little girl. Oh, Daddy, I'm 15. I could ride from here to Halifax if I needed to. Of course, I should have realized. She's a Lloyd, no mistake. What a vexatious family. <laughs> There's pork German, sardines, ham, flour, tobacco, and sugar. And here's oranges and some new baked bread from my ma. She sent her love. Take ours to her uh, and our thanks. And there's this. Maggie said you hadn't one. I knitted it myself. I suppose it's a bit warm now for a scarf. Oh, it still gets chilly up here. It's a beauty. A lot of work. Oh, no, not so much. Tom, did you bring the papers? Well, what's in them? They've outlawed the four of you. By act of parliament. Well, what does that mean? It means that any man, policeman or not, can shoot you without a challenge. And any person that helps you can get 15 years jail. Then we can't ask for help anymore. Whether you ask or not, we'll still give it. But there's no denying that things are going to get hard. Money for a start. Isn't there some left from our gold mining? Most of it went on the trial. It's nearly all gone now. All right, then. We'll have to get some more. A grand idea. But where? Where money always comes from. A bank. Gracie, you'll just have to stop growing. Now that I've left school, couldn't I have a dress of my own? Oh, well. I'm sure it's coming. So is Christmas. Michael, want to get down? I hope he knows all the fuss he's causing. Come in, Aaron. Good day to you, Kitty. Maggie, Grace. Hello, Hello, Aaron. Aaron, what brings you over this way? Oh, just passing the time. I'll put the kettle on. Have you heard from Joe? Not for a while now. Have you? No. I suppose he'll come and see me when he can. Apart from anything else, there's his girlfriend. I'll have to arrange the meeting. Who is she? Oh, you wouldn't know her. 
She comes from over our way. She's all right. But not a patch on you, though, Kitty. <laughs> Get away with you. You and Joel Byrne, you make a good pair. Yeah, we do. Well, we did. You used to spend all of our time together. Got up to more trouble than a cow upstairs. You miss him. Things have changed for all of us. Has to be a decent sized bank or we're wasting our time. And that means leaving the ranges and riding into the middle of a decent sized town. And out again. And any moment of that ride, some enterprising gent, with a repeating rifle and a steady hand, can earn himself £2,000 with just four bullets. I thought about that. Shot in the back like Dan Morgan, and the skin peeled off your face for a souvenir. It seems to me, unless we take risks like that, we'll just sit here in the bush, begging scraps from our friends. But I don't want to talk you into it. You or the boys, mate. You don't have to talk me into anything. I was just... just getting the taste of it. Rolling the words round in my mouth before I swallowed the idea. I was with Aaron one day at London Rock and he, he bet me a bridle. I couldn't take my horse over the edge down to the bed of the gully. It was a slope like that. Only oh, heart was gone like a quartz crusher. But I put her at it. Oh, we went full gallop. There was rocks and trees coming at us in all directions. Before we knew it, it was all over. She'd never put a foot wrong. But I reckon it was a full five minutes before me heart stopped galloping. <laughs> when I think about a bank, I feel up there on top of the rock again. I reckon it scares me. But hell, I want to do it. Be a woman having to ride in a confounded hat rack and getting half smothered into the bargain. Don't take it off, Steve. It suits you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Ben Gould was right. The bank at your row is the one. It's close to the railway station, but pretty quiet. Mm. And we can almost reach the town without leaving the Rangers. That's right. It's your row, then. We've got a lot to work out, like how to decoy the police away from the district. We'll need to have some decent clothes. And a depot. Out of town. Somewhere to feed and spell our horses. A place where we've got friends. See the manager, please. I'm afraid he won't be in till this afternoon. But I'm the foreman. Now, what can I do to help you? Who are you? Who do you think? Could be Ned Kelly, for all I know. You're a damn good guesser, mate. Say hello. 
can't be blurred. When is everybody? Everybody's bailed up. Bail up or I'll blow your brains out. Don't shoot, Your Honor, don't shoot. Get off and be quick about it. The Harker's nearly here. We passed him. All the prisoners seem all right. Bit of a holiday. I brought my cards. We'll keep them happy. You may unharness the horse. Ah. All right, bail up. I should do no such thing. You doors are damn well told. I'll take a look in the car. Dan, you keep an eye on the kid. Rather convincing, eh, Mr. Kelly? The picture of innocence and a hero to boot. You should be treading the boards, Mr. Gloucester. You know, actually, I found it rather exciting. Should we uh, continue the uh, fracas when we leave the van? I think we've done the trick. Oh, pity. Well, Ben will give me your measurements of you and your colleagues, but unfortunately, I have rather a limited selection. But I think we can outfit you all rather handsomely. Here, <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. they bring the orca over now. You might stand a chance without opening the door. Ah, even if we overpower these two, there's still the others. Look, wait until tomorrow when some of them go off to rob the bank. Hi, that'll be the time. Hand over your guns. Then we will. And I'll trouble you to mind your manner, sir. And I'll trouble you to shut up and get down, you old windbag. How dare you? You're a disgrace to the force constable. Oh, mark my words, I'll report you to your superior officer. Don't come to bounce on me. I recognize you. We've got the Kelly gang here. Are you taking a leave of your senses, man? Constable, sir. Get their guns. Sir. Now, where'd you shake that car? We are employees of the government printing office in Melbourne. A likely story. You're under arrest. This is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. Mark my yeah. words. Yeah. 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 The telegraph line. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm sorry, sir. We're closed. I have a check here from Mr. McCauley of Faithful's Creek. He was sure you could help me. Very well, sir. How would you like it, sir? I'll take whatever you've got. Bail up. We need the second key for the safe. Where's Mrs. Scott? In the residence. But I warn you, take care how you treat my wife. And you take care how you talk to Mr. Kelly. Mr. Scott. Young man, 
It's all very well for your father to take you to a funeral, but I'm the one who has to put up with you home from school all day. Now, where has Bobby got to? Uh, Susie! Look, Robert, I do not wish to hear another word. I only want to go for a simple outing with Mother and the girls. But, as usual, your arrangements... Susie! We have a visitor. Oh. Allow me to introduce Mr. Edward Kelly. He stuck up the bank. Ma'am, I must trouble you all to come back with us to Faithful's Creek. As soon as you're ready. Do you think they'd be silly enough to leave one man looking after all this crowd? I have a thought for the rest of us. This is what for the police. A pretty penny repaying taxes, and where are they when you need them? Amen to that. These carry boys have done us no harm. And speaking for myself, if they want to rob a bank, that's their business. It hasn't been counted. Two thousand pounds is near enough to me. Good heavens, Susan, you're not going to a damn race meeting. I think Mrs. Scott looks splendid. Why, thank you, Mr. Kelly. And for my part, may I say that you are much better looking and better mannered than I should have expected. I hadn't counted on quite so many people in our party. I'll have to use your buggy, Mr. Scott. If you want my buggy, you can go and harness the damn thing yourself. <laughs> intention of asking for mercy for myself, of any mortal man, or apologizing. But I wish to give warning that if my people do not get justice, and my mother and those innocent men released from prison, I will seek revenge for the name and character which has been given to me and my relations, while God gives me strength to pull the trigger. If I get justice, I will cry a go, for I need no lead or powder to revenge me cause. And if my words be louder, I'll oppose the law with no offence. I've said this in a letter I've written to a member of Parliament who has shown interest in our cause. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Will you post it for me? Well, I will, Mr. Kelly. All right. None of you will leave here for three hours. Remember that. Three hours. I hold you responsible, Mr. Macaulay. <laughs>
Bastard, don't be quick about it. Is Superintendent Nicholson here? Form the men up. What is it, Constable? Father Wild of the Kellys? Well, uh, yes, sir. This telegram. Ah. Tell the men to get the horses loaded back on. The Kellys have just robbed the bank at Juror, more than a hundred miles back into Victoria. What's the plan, sir? We, we head back to your oar and pick up the pursuit. I'll make the necessary arrangements, sir. The whole thing is quite beyond Nicholson. The Kellys are making utter fools of the entire Victoria police force. And the humorous papers are having a field day. Well, their attitude is quite irresponsible, sir. The very word, my dear fellow. Let us hope the press show a greater sense of responsibility with this letter of Kelly's. Sir? The Cameron, the Member of Parliament, has received an outrageous letter, which Kelly expects to be published. He openly admits to the police murders. Apart from that, it is a tissue of lies and self-justification. If we release his mother, he offers to give up his bush-ranging career. Preposterous. Precisely. The choice is not his. As from now, I am placing you, my dear Hare, in charge of the Kelly pursuit. We shall wrap up this regrettable burlesque once and for all. The Baxter, I think champagne is called for. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Well, that's, that's nice to hear, Mrs. Byrne, but, but all at once. It's been mounting up a long time now. Close to 45 pounds. £45. I want to thank you, Mr. Allen, for looking after us and all through these hard times. I hope to be paying cash from now on. And so do a few others from round here. It's about me stock mortgage. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Miller, but we can advance you no more money. Oh, but I've, uh, I've come to pay it off. 30 pound, I think it was. I hope you don't mind if it's all in silver. Kitty, wash your hands. And you better call the other dogs inside, quick. He's been poisoned. But who could do that? Somebody who wants to sneak around the house without the dogs warning us. Our heroic police. In there, boy. We might catch something. The letter is evidently composed with the object of obtaining public sympathy. It concludes with certain fiendish threats, which Kelly says he will carry out if justice is not done to his mother. Damn them for a pack of toadish liars and me for a fool! 
When was a politician ever interested in anything more than his own buffed-up greed for power? And the people will give it to him. I tell you, Ned, it's a waste of time. They don't want to hear what we have to say. They don't care about the truth. Well, I'll damn, we'll make them care. They sit in their precious monument at the top of Collins Street, playing a parliament in a grand English manner. What do they know? What do they care? Uh, about the lives of poor country people in faraway places? Here's a letter. Laugh at it. Throw it in the waste paper basket. And down the club for a drink. While the mother of 12 children wastes in jail for something she never done. What have we got to do to make them listen? Well, I reckon you've done more than you think. Ever since the bank robbery, you hear the same thing all through the district. These men don't behave like cold-blooded murderers. People got a laugh out of it. Well, I reckon I did, too. You got a lot more than money out of your raw. <laughs> Still, they, they print this mullock. Tell people I made nothing but threats. Not a word about us calling it quits if they freed our mother. Poor Ma. She'll be all alone this Christmas. Except for the baby. First time she's been away from the family. to be in bed. Wait. Somebody's coming. The dogs are quiet. Dinner. Oh, we had to, didn't we? You and it never get a look in once you two laughed. The others eat. Oh, well, no matter. Come on, sit down. Can I have a look at your gun, Ned? Well, we'll see about that afterwards. Ah! Yeah, look here now. Look at this. This is a real Christmas, isn't it? Now, how am I going to eat my dinner? Like this, eh? search party all morning and when they get back to town the idiot is as bold as brass watching the station now, something must be done these damn friends of the kellys know as much about our movements as we do perhaps even more i agree here something needs to be done the question is what we must curb them stop them feeding the gang spying on us and warning the outlaws but my dear hare how does one achieve that short of locking the beggars up how, indeed, sir. Before we lock anyone up, uh, surely we need a charge and evidence to support it. We have the charge under the Outlawry Act. Assistance direct or indirect to an outlaw. My God. 
God, we've got them. We get the sub-officers of every station throughout the district to give us lists of known sympathizers and lock them up in one fell swoop. Where does that leave the Kellys? Hmm? Mr. Hare, I must remind you, we cannot bring people to trial without evidence. Then we don't try them. We simply arrest them and keep remanding them for trial until we catch the outlaws. With respect, sir, it could be considered that by such a course of action we were perverting the law. Mr. Sadler, I have been hunted from civilization by the Chief Secretary, who obsessively believes that I, as Chief Commissioner of Police, should personally pursue the Kellys. Now, I say to you that if the proposed extreme measure shortens our stay in this wretched town by a single day, then we should do it and be damned to the lot of them. That's got it. Now, can you hold it? Let her down. That should last you for a while, Mag. You could drive across Mount Buffalo on that wheel. Sure, Tom. But it might be easier with the whole cart. <laughs> it's Cat Lloyd. God save us. Look at her horse. They've taken me, Dar. The police. Why? What's he done? Nothing. He's done nothing. They took him in for questioning. You know what's happened. <laughs> They've got the wrong Tom Lloyd. They've nailed Uncle Tom instead of me. I sent us this telegram from Beeshworth. Turn the four bullocks out of the paddock. Oh, Kathy, you've got a clever father. Right under the nose is the police. It's a warning to the boys. There's something going on. I'll find out and get word to them. Wait, Tom, I'll come with you. That you won't. You'll stay here out of harm's way. You've done well. I'll give him the horse's spell before I ride home, if that's all right. Of course it is. Whatever else. Come on up to the house. I'll make us a cup of tea. Our cousin Tom's a darling man, but he'll take a deal of convincing that you and I can ride better than a lot of men. And the horse will carry us a damn sight farther. Sometimes I think it's the hardest thing in the world to sit quiet at home. Wondering what's happening to the boys and those that are with him. You feel like you're going to smother with the waiting. And the waiting and the worry of it. Poor little cat. Why does everyone call me little? I'm not a child anymore. Oh, Cap. I went up to the Devil's Basin with Tom. And Lad says it's a big ride for a little girl. I gave him a scarf I made. I suppose he looks at it like some little thing a child's knitted at school. Why ever? Plenty of girls are married at 15. How old were you? Just 16. Well, I'm 16 this year, do you see? I'm a woman. I don't think the real problem is that everyone calls you little girl. Isn't it that Ned calls you little girl? Oh, Kath. What's to be done? You won't say anything. You won't tell him. The worst thing is, I've got a picture in my mind of how he looks when I last saw him. Standing on the rocks, with one hand up, goodbye. 
going to try to hold on to that picture because you can't ever know me when to see him again. Wild, Uncle Tom, Jack Lloyd, Jack McMonagall. Fourteen of our friends. Some of them haven't even brought in their harvest yet. Crops left standing in the fields to rot, families to fend for themselves, and some without even neighbors to help, because they've been locked up too. I never wanted this. My God, Jack McMonagall. It's a year since I've seen him. They've made it a crime to have known me. Well, every harvest is going to be bought in. Tom, you'll take money to all those families, right? Oh, sure, no, no. Oh, we're going to need some more money. Good. David us, so we'll hit them right back. Another bank. That'll take the starch out of them. Yeah, but hang on. Every town with a bank big enough to rob's got soldiers guarding it now. Every town in Victoria. So we cross the Murray into New South Wales. But the traps are watching every crossing place on the river. There's the Murray River. We make them think we're going to cross right up here, to the east. How do we do that, then? Aaron, he'll do it. The traps have been on to him once already to help them. So he fronts up and tells them we'll cross the river and head for Dolben. Me family used to be there. They'll go for it like starving rats. <laughs> <laughs> so, while the crushers are charging up to here, we take our own sweet time across the river here. A hundred miles away. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. There's someone asking to see the commissioner. Well, Captain Standish is at his hotel. I would prefer not to disturb him. Well, sir, it's an associate of the Kellys, a lad called Aaron Sherrod. Uh, bring him in. Superintendent Hare, this is Aaron Sherrod. Take a seat. Well, uh, actually, I come to speak with Captain Standish. How I many knows me? If your visit concerns the killers, I am now in charge of the case. You've taken over from that cranky old Scotchman. I have. Sit down, laddie. To be assured, Aaron, you can speak to me in the utmost confidence. But if you prefer to wait to try to see Captain Standish in the morning, that is of no concern to me. I won't press you. My predecessor, Mr. Nicholson, was a great believer in wheedling information from people. For my part, since I have been in the district, I have simply let it be known that if people wish to speak, I am always ready to listen. <clears throat> well, uh, Mr. Hare, I was in two minds about telling you what I know. But I think you're the sort of man I can talk to. If that is your decision, Aaron, I shall not attempt to dissuade you. Now. Joe Bourne and Dan Kelly come to see me yesterday. Where? I was working on my selection, just outside of Beechworth. They want me to go away with them and act as a scout. Did they say where they were going? Goulburn. They reckon they're gonna stick up a bank. Did they say when? Hmm. But, uh, but it'll be soon. They want me to go straight away. Did they say anything else? If you know the killer so well, why have you come forward with this information? Well, my own father himself was a member of the Royal Irish Constabulary. I reckon I know my duty. And uh, especially after talking to you, Mr. Hare, I'm sure I've done the right thing. You've done well, Aaron. 
Very well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hare. It's best you're not seen around town. If you, uh, if you hear anything more, send me word and I'll come up to Beechworth to meet you. That's a good lad. Mr. Hare. It's a pleasure doing business with a gentleman. I take that one with a grain of salt, sir. Let's not be too hasty, Sergeant. It's simply a matter of confidence and trust. You know, I think that somehow I've made a most wonderful impression upon that young man. In fact, I have him in the palm of my hand. <laughs> I'm begging your pardon, sir, but I thought you wanted to know straight away. Dan Kelly and Joe Byrne seen riding towards the Murray. What did I say, Whelan? You old doubting Thomas, eh? I knew I'd won the boy. Now, here's Goulburn. Now, see here, these hills, right across the Murray. That's the place. Now, get these telegrams off right away. We'll alert the New South Wales police and, uh, who do we have near the Murray? Uh, parties under senior constables Mullane and Strong, sir. We'll lay them on every crossing in the area at once. By heaven, we have them this time. Crossing place in the area has been covered from both sides. A trap, gentlemen, ready to be sprung. Constable Devine, Constable Richards. I hope you slept well. Oh, yeah. All right. Of course. Yes. They haven't upset you? No. Actually, they've been quite well mannered. <sighs> All right, ma'am. That'll do for now. Kelly, I warn you. My wife is in a delicate state of health. And if you do anything. Mr. Devine. Your wife is expecting a baby and looks in fine strapping health to me. Now, I'm one of 12, so I should know something about it. Mr. Richard? Mr. Devine? What? What are you doing here? Hey. Hey. What's going on? The Kelly gang stuck us up in the middle of the night. Took our uniforms and put us in here. With you. Oh, you haven't lent to me? And if you want to get out of here, shut up! That was a grand breakfast, Mrs. Devine. Oh, now, don't you worry about these. You just go about your day as though we weren't here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the bath water. I cleaned for that. Now, that's one thing you won't do. You shouldn't be lifting, you know. Let your husband do it from now on. Oh, Lord, the time. What is it? I forgot mass. Oh, not to go myself, but we have it in the courthouse. And I always give it a sweep out and do the flowers and such like. If I don't do it, father and everyone, they'll wonder what's happened. 
Donny's a very religious lad. He's fairly itching to get into one of these uniforms. He'll give you a hand. Look happy, Constable. With a couple of fine reinforcements like us in town. What's there to worry about? There's the bank, under the same roof as the hotel. First thing, we take the pub. Bail up everybody we can for hostages. As soon as the bank opens, we move in. Joe in the back door, me in the front. While you lads keep everyone rounded up. Afterwards, we get the printer to take me letter, break the telegraph line, and we're off. Well, what do you think of that, Toppins? Seems all right, doesn't it, eh? Be sure to remember this night now, because tomorrow's going to be history. Charge it to the government account. Charge it to the government account. <laughs> I reckon they can afford it. <laughs> Richard! We're putting you back in harness. Well, you better have a revolver, too. That's empty, of course. <laughs> You're really cutting it thick, aren't you? Just put the jumper on. You're not just here to rob a bank. You're looking to make fools of the police. You might just have a point there. For God's sake, Kelly. The uniform won't be the laughing stock. It'll be us. Or me and the senior. But we live our lives in this town. what quarrel you got with the Victorian police. But when you shot those troopers down there, now at least they were left... dignity. After the day, we'll have nothing. All right, Richards, come on, you've had your say. I wonder why I bothered. Richards, would you introduce us? Mr. Cox, Ned Kelly. <laughs> How, how'd you do? You seem to be having a quiet morning, Mr. Cox. Let's try and drum up a bit of trade. Doing in here, you, you can't come through this well way. Well, off, it's the Kellys. No sign of the boss yet. In here. <laughs> All right. Let's get the safe open. I'm sorry, I can't. We need the manager's key. And where's the manager? White wings, they never grow weary. La -da 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 Mr. Tarleton? Yes? I'm sorry, sir, but we're stuck up. Oh, don't talk rubbish, man. It's not rubbish. <laughs> hey, Ned! Who's he? The school teacher. Good. You can hold this. And then you can go back to school and declare a half-holiday in honor of the Kelly gang's visit. <laughs> right, come on, come on, come on. We'll have a lot in here. You too, Chop Chop. Hey, bring out them papers. 
But they're official bank documents. There's no value. What sort of documents? Deeds. Stock mortgages. Stock mortgages. Millstones, you mean, around the necks of poor farmers. Give them here. I'll burn the lot. <laughs> but my insurance policy is among them. Well, you'd better find it quick, boy -o. Straight away. Right, Ned. I wanted that man for a most particular reason. He was to publish a letter I have written. My chance to tell the truth against all the blackness that's been spread about me and me family. I tell you, I'll rip this town apart at the seams to find him. Mr. Kelly. I might be able to help. I could take the letter and persuade Gil to print it when we find him. It's very important to me, Mr. Livy. Fifty-six pages of my life. You understand? I believe I do. Are on the callus. I'll be in there. Callus be damned. One of our bank will like it. I never You leave any gang. I ask sympathy from no man. Nor do I attempt to deny that it was my hand and mine alone that killed those police at Stringy Bark Creek. Yet the blame for those deaths lies not with me, but with that cabbage-hearted coward, that mean article, Constable Fitzpatrick, who lied away the freedom of me mother and me baby sister. And that bloated unicorn, Judge Barry, who locked him away for three years and sentenced me without a trial. It is the proud boast of English justice that a man is innocent until proved to be guilty. But only if he has money. Only if he has position. If he is respectable. Without these things, a man will starve for justice like sheep in a field of dust. And that's enough to give any man a thirst. Before I finish, there's one man in this room who would kill me if I'd give him the chance. Constable Richards. Richards? Oh. Why do you think we had him with us all day? Because we couldn't trust him out of our sight. You would have taken my life. So can you blame me now if I was to shoot you? My revolver's empty. But if I had bullets... Your game, Richards. I'll give you that. But if ever we meet again, I promise, I'll shoot you. I'll see you at Barrowman. 
Don't spend it all before we get there. When you head off in the wrong direction, see if you can attract a bit of notice. I reckon we might be able to do something, eh, Denny? Master in the lockup. You won't release him or give the alarm for three hours. You should be grateful, gentlemen. You put your town on the map. But take care. If you disobey me orders, I'll come back and wipe it off again. Oh, it was when they robbed your Rowers Bank, you said they'd be shut down. But now they've robbed another bank that's in Jerilly Town. The ginger will return me, boys, so let us take their part and sing again on me. They rain the Kelly's burning heart. They destroy communication by telegraph at least. Of robberies and plunderings, they had a perfect peace. <laughs> Where they've gone to mystery, the facts they cannot tell. No. Until we hear from them again, our bitches all farewell. Hey! Hey! So, you wrote a grand song there. A proud old Irish tune and the words of a true-born colonial son. Yeah. I'm only sorry that 15 of our friends can't be with us tonight to hear it. They've been in jail for five weeks now without trial. And that's another grand old Irish tune with a colonial interpretation. But the British Lion is slow to learn that the rights of poor men such as we are cannot be ignored. Where one poor man is abused and oppressed, a dozen will rise to help him. It will pay the government to give justice and liberty to all these innocent people. If not, I will be compelled to show some colonial stratagem that will open the eyes of not only Victoria and its police, but also the whole British army. Strength to absent friends and confusion to the Saxon. <laughs> Catherine, I didn't know you were here. I only came just a minute ago. With Dar and Jack locked up, there's a lot to do. And of course, the cows wouldn't come in early. What's a festivity to a cow? The last time I saw you, I recall you got all peppery because I called you a little girl. Maggie hasn't. I hasn't what? Nothing. Anyway, you don't look like a little girl tonight. Oh, it's the dress and taller heels. So that's what it is, is it? Concerned, Aaron, that we were given false information in this matter. 
Well, I told you they were going to rob a bank in New South Wales. Now, didn't I? You told me they were going to Goulburn. Well, I must have changed their minds. All right. What's to be done about it? Come in. Now, ah. Aaron, you know Detective Ward. Oh, yes. I know Mr. Ward. Aaron was about to suggest a course of action. <laughs> I shall be most interested to hear that. They'll be making their way back from Gerildery. First thing, Joe Bourne will go home to see his mother. And likely as not, he'll have the whole gang with him. Now, I can show you where they'll tie up their horses. It's the gang we're after, not the horses. I can lead a party straight to the house, sir. And everybody and his mother will know about it. Like that pack of buffoons you had out from Kilfra this morning. Hell for leather on the tracks of another police party. How do you know about this? I make it my business to know. We'll clear out for a while, but we'll be back soon. After the traps stop chasing their tail. Take care. Both of you. see him again. Very well, Aaron. We bring our men to the head of Bullock Camp Gully tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, is that right? If Mr. Ward can get you that far, I'll lead you on from there. Good night. He'll lead us on, all right, on another wild goose chase. I'm hopeful that won't be the case. I believe the lad is true to me, earnest in his desire to help us. I hope you're right, sir. But even if Sherrod is trying to hoodwink us, he could still be of great value. Let him play his own game with us. If he's handled right, that boy could still be the means of destroying the Kelly gang.